All right, here I am, Spectacular, the Silver Stacular, in Coin Guy's shop in Spring Hill, Florida. Coin Guy, what's going on today in the world? Hey, happy first days of spring. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe, and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. Business has been busy. Uh, we just moved a bunch of silver and gold. Uh, it comes in, it goes out. Because of incidents in the world, you got a lot of fear. I had a person come in the other day, wanted 200,000 in silver. 200,000 ounces? thousand dollars worth. Oh, dollars worth. And I explained to them that I'm not a bullion dealer, I'm a rare coin dealer. So if you need rare coins, 10 S's, 11 S's, semi-key pennies, Come and see us, go to our website, or call us and we'll put orders together as you need it. But one woman wanted 200,000 in silver. I got a phone call yesterday of a person wanted 25,000 in silver. They want to give me cash. I said, uh-uh, wrong person there. <laughs> I ain't taking 25,000. I'll take a few thousand. You're cash, a little worried about cash right now, right? Everybody's worried about cash. You got the banks looking at everybody cross-eyed if they ask for three, four, five thousand. I don't see any problems with that. It's your money. Uh, certain banks are really playing the uh, big brother to the to the hilt. Uh, I've had my incidents with them. Uh, stick to credit unions. They don't seem to give you as much hassle with your own money as other banks do. I thought that was weird. I went to the bank and I'm signing paperwork and stuff to get money that I put into the bank, you know? And I get that, that it's kind of like a loan to the bank. That they're holding your money. It's their money while it's in there. Yeah. But, I mean, I can take it out when I want, I thought. But you got to sign all this weird paperwork if you get too much money out. It's, I don't know. It was kind of weird for me. It gets to be a little intimidating. And you get the older people who, you know, somebody wants to walk in and take 5000 in cash out, they give them the third degree about that. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, it's, I thought that was weird. Crazy. But, you know, you've got that. I've had customers coming in telling me that they're ordering cases of nickels. Cases of nickels. Well, actually, i got something for you here, guy. I want to. I want to go ahead and. Uh, I brought this today. A little prop. I want to. I want to. I want to cash in, man. I got my little roll of nickels. What's that worth right now? Two dollars. <laughs> but it's worth more than that, right? Because. But here, I've got bigger prop. Here's ninety-three nickels. This is one pound of nickel. One pound of nickels. Okay. We did some research because I got people, as I said, buying rolls of nickels because they're going to corner the market. Okay. And I don't want there to be a chain shortage this summer because you can't find nickels. Now, nickels, everybody knows, cost more than a nickel to make. Nickel hit $100,000 a ton in, I believe it was the beginning of this month, beginning of March, there was a squeeze. And it went to 100,000, a metric ton. A standard ton is 2,000 pounds. A metric ton is 2,200 pounds. We did the math. Right now it's 37,200 for metric ton. Sixteen dollars and ninety cents a pound. Sixteen. This is one pound, and this ain't no sixteen dollars and ninety-seven cents. But there are people out there who are going to say, "Well, first of all, and I don't know if everybody knows this, a nickel is only twenty-five percent nickel. It's seventy-five percent copper. That's something that I don't think a lot of people realize. Seventy-five percent copper, but copper is almost five dollars a pound." It's not really, you know, that cheap either. When you do, when all's done and said and done, you're probably looking at about 12, 14 cents a pound. 12 or 14 cents to make a nickel. Wow. Not counting labor. And who knows where that's going to take you. So five cents, a five cent nickel takes 12 cents to make? Probably closer to 15 cents, at least. That's crazy. And if, if nickel stayed at 100,000, a ton, it would have cost you 40 cents. That's crazy. Well, think of it. A hundred thousand dollars a ton is fifty dollars a pound, and that's the effort and everything. Mm -hmm. But with the spot price, a nickel is more like what? Like maybe like eight cents, nine cents? No, it's, it's going to be all of that. Really? Because of the price of the copper, it's three quarters copper. Ah, okay. So there is more than a penny's worth. I think it's three point five percent or three point seven percent, three point seven grams of copper. In the old wheat pennies, used to be 3.1. So there's more copper than in, in a nickel. There's more copper in a nickel than an old penny. Ah. 
and at five dollars a pound it's three cents so there's three three and a half cents in copper and then there's 10 cents worth of nickel that's crazy and that's just the material cost you know uh, so in order to get this prop i actually asked for a whole box of nickels from yeah. my bank Good and, luck. They, and they said no nah, we can't do it and i said shoot I, can i at least get one roll they're like eh, we could probably do one roll for you and this is all i could get and they charge you three dollars no, no, they charge me $2 at the bank. <laughs> no, they ask you, what are you going to do with this money? Yeah, right, are you being held against your will? And I'm like, come on, man, I'm, I'm using my money to buy this thing. But yeah, that's that's wild. I huh? thought it was interesting to touch on that, because there wasn't only one person who said that. I had a couple of people say they're going to save all their nickels now. And I mean, I save pennies. You see that? That's all the pre-1982 pennies. I figure one of these days, I got 100,000 pennies in the back easily. I figure one of these days, they're going to let us start melting the copper. The pre-81s are 95% copper, 5% zinc. Yeah. But there's about three cents. It's what we say, 140 pennies. So if you look at three cents, it'd be 420. Copper's 475. So there's three cents in copper in every penny. It's crazy. The old pennies. Right. The new pennies. What's that, uh, 83 and prior? Yeah, that would be 1982 and older. Right. Those are 95 and 5% zinc. Now they're 95% zinc and 5% copper. Dump. But zinc has got doubled in value too. I mean, all the metals are going crazy because of war in the world. And now you gotta worry about what's the price of wheat and corn. I mean, it's just all kinds of things are in turmoil and flux. Well, our president actually uh, said, he said there's going to be a, uh, a food shortage, probably worldwide, not just over there worldwide. And was he going to blame General Mills? I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I mean, when there's no oil, he blames the oil producers. We could be self-sustainable. I don't see any problem with that. But I think it's a, a good idea, and you could probably agree, to have some, some metals <laughs> in your hand oh, I, and have some food stores and some real survival things because I keep I keep extra store things that last. Baked beans. You may laugh about that, but you could live on baked beans. Ask the old cowboys. But you know, you've got baked beans, you've got the cans of baked beans. What are they? They used to be a dollar a can, now they're two dollars a can. Welcome to the New World Order. Uh, they, they store for years. Yeah. You know, Progresso soup. Those are a meal. Every can is a meal if you needed it. The beans, probably, a whole can of beans has probably got 1,200 calories in it. Those are all worth Little you know, things. a couple of years. White well, rice, you know, white rice is like 10 years. When I put away, I have a couple of 10 pound bags, I got ahead of the curve. I put away the paw boiled. Oh, okay. Because you save half the boiling time. There you go. And things like that, I think everybody needs to have some of that. You never know. Just in case. Just like what you saw happen in another part of the world. You never know what could bring tomorrow. You know what I say that, uh, especially like us here in Florida, um, we've seen hurricanes and stuff. We've seen that knock out entire areas, mm -hmm. and uh, they were struggling out there. It's nice just to be prepared a little bit. You need to have a little preparation. Um, I've got a generator. I haven't turned it on yet. The wife keeps yelling at me. But I got a brand new generator I bought a year ago. I figured I needed it to keep my air thing running for at night because I still use oxygen. But I've never, never got it all. I got the, I got the propane. I got the gasoline. And I cycle out the gasoline. But I got a brand new generator. I just haven't turned on yet. Maybe have a little cash on hand just in case, too. Always huh? have cash. Yeah. Just cash in case. is king. Cash, gold, silver, as I said. Um... I got a whole bunch of these right now. These starting to pile up. I got people coming in with more of them. Can you, can you show me, uh, show me sure. one of those? So, cool story that uh, we were, you know, kind of like, oh, no, they're going to make these again in 2022. These are the 2021 100th anniversary Morgan dollars, right? Uh, the United States Mint's like, hey, we're just going to keep making these things because they sold so well. Well, now they can't get the blanks to make them. So, in 2022, they said, hey, can't do it here in 2022. Maybe in 2023. Can't get the planchets, the silver rounds, yeah. the blank rounds. Yep. Yeah. Crazy, huh? These are selling pretty good, though, now, huh? They've been selling. Yep. I got about a dozen on hand. People are going to start jumping points. on these again, going, hey, huh? they're not going to sell them this year. Maybe I'll go back to them. Well, I got them. But, That's you know, cool. what's king is still gold. Uh, gold at any price. Um, but you have some gold, but you some, sold some as I walked in the store today. Yeah. Guy bought one of everything. He bought a five, <laughs> a two and a half. He bought a China half ounce panda. And I had a maple. Can I see some of the gold you have in here? Sure. This is kind of fancy gold. Now, this is rare gold. Yeah, yeah. This is gold with low mintages. 
And this you're buying because of the numbers on them. 6970s. Nice eagle. So here you got a you got this coin in the 70s like $2500. If it's certified. But even over the counter, that's like the over the counter price. It means raw, it's in gray sheet raw. Um Here's your 95. Beautiful. Huh? 69. This one I think is X jewelry. Which but one? This one. This one? But Roar, it's what, that price. What makes you think that? I see a slight bit of Polish on it. Polish? A little like the... Polish. Oh. We yeah, used no, to call it, you always call it, we, that's a joke in the coin <laughs> business. But it's a rare coin. There's less than 40,000. And then when you get like this, how many are certified 70s? Uh, 70s are the big ones, like this. Pretty nice. Pretty yeah. nice guy. These coins have big numbers. I sold one the other day. The guy, I didn't have another half ounce. Guy paid for twelve fifty for one that was in ex jewelry, which is about two hundred more than I would have sold him a regular half ounce for. But he just wanted one. People want them at any price. I'll tell you what, the uh, uh, twenty twenty two proof eagles that the mint just put out, those did really really well. Okay. Really well. Um, hey, based on sorry, based <laughs> a coin dealer, right? Coin dealer talk. Vest pocket dealer. I've heard some conflicting stories on what that truly is. What's your definition, vest pocket dealer? A vest pocket dealer is what I did for over for 30 years, is you would go to coin shows or you would go to people's homes and advertise. But basically, you go to a coin show and you walk the floor and you see what you can buy from one person to sell to another person. You don't get a table and you walk the floor. So I used to do it twice a month. For 30 years, you would go to one guy and say, hey, how much you want for 90%? He'd give you, first you'd walk the floor, find out who's paying the most on the floor for 90% or for gold eagles or whatever it may have been. Then you walk around to everybody and you find out who's selling it for less than what the big guys will buy it for. Ah. I've gone to shows where I'll spend an hour buying the silver, walk around the table, sold it to the guy who was behind. This one dealer is, is sitting there the guy behind him is the wholesaler. Woe unto him. I flip it, make $375 in an hour. Wow. All he did was buy the silver and sold it to the guy behind him. Just right there at the show. And then I take that money and I buy $10 libs. Now let me ask you this, okay? Are they looked down on a little bit, the best pocket dealers, from the people that are buying tables? They might be. They don't allow you to sell on the floor. In other words, you... you and I've done it when I've been at shows and I was the assistant boss, where you get a guy who's trying to do a deal right in front of you. No, no, you can't do that. Right. But I'm buying it from a legitimate From a table to a table. table. So that's I'm okay. selling it to a table. I'm not doing dealer to dealer while I'm having a cup of coffee at the snack bar. You're not supposed to do that. That's just not done. Gotcha. It's, so that's you know, the difference. It's not protocol. Gotcha. So that they don't, they're, best pocket dealers are everywhere you go. So a best pocket dealer could just be me at a show, finding Absolutely. a good deal somewhere and going to a different table and selling it. Absolutely. Oh, very good. I don't think I ever did a show where I didn't make money in it. That's cool. I might make 20 bucks, but any money I made in it, I put back into gold. I like gold. I've been buying gold since 1990. Um, you know, and that's what best pocket dealers are. They are guys who don't usually have tables. They walk, well, you know, you can go to... You can go to a flea market and you have a lot of glorified West, you know, best pocket dealers there. Sure. Those guys don't have resale numbers, most of them. They don't have anything. They're just selling. They tell, oh, you know, I had a guy in here the other day telling me, oh, I'm just a, a, a collector and, uh, and I sell my excess. But he pays by the month at a flea market and he's bragging he sells 10000 a week. 10000 a week? And that's what? Just a collector? <laughs> Whatever it may be. You mentioned that you actually buy and keep gold. Yeah. I'm not just for the store. You hold See, now look at these. You can almost see the difference. Look at the luster of an unk and these two. Yeah, this has got a touch of polish. Uh, or else look. In a 69, this coin is twenty three ninety nine. Seventy, this is probably like $2,700. So... Get this for fourteen fifty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Half the price, of, but it's the rare coin. That's what you're paying for. Yeah. A couple of these I pulled out of my own stuff. Can, can I ask you, kind of, to comment on this? Uh, some people on the comments section in the video, they say something along the lines of, like, "Oh, 
you can't trust these guys because they're just trying to sell gold and silver. You know, why would they try to sell gold and silver if they really believe it's valuable? Because that's, that's the business we're in. We can't keep it all. You buy too much. Even though, as I said, I'm not per se a bullion wholesaler. I buy and sell bullion. But as I said, there are people who have approached me. I was approached with a person uh, this week who had 25000 in silver that they wanted to sell. I asked them if they wanted to take a check. They said, no, sorry. I'm not going to give anybody 25000 in cash. You want to bring in a few thousand, I'll buy it. Uh, and you, there's plenty of silver. You know, I find it amazing that there's as much 90% out there as there is. As I said, I remember in 1980 when some of my colleagues in competition were still in diapers. I remember in 1980, <laughs> it's the truth. I, know. I remember in 1980 when I would go to shows and you could get 35 times space for silver. And there was nobody for them to sell it to. A uh, guy I knew used to melt it and he had his own logo for it. It was Phoenix Silver. And he was melting, he bragged to me, he was melting 10 bags a week. 10,000 face. Dimes, quarters, and halves. Melting it. And this went on for months as silver was going all the way up between 79, late 79, and early 1980. And this is one little guy in the corner of Nassau County. What were the big boys doing? Yeah, right. I can't believe there's any more. I, and there weren't people like me buying and selling. It was only to the smelter. Buy it from the general public as a vest pocket dealer. Sell it to the smelter. And it was being melted for the most part. You don't have now where you have people prepping and fear and everything else involved. You had the kind of inflation now. Now that I think about it, early 80s, because you came off of the last Democratic president, I don't want to talk about it, you had Jimmy Carter. I have a, I have a bank book at home from 1981 where I got 16.5% interest. 16.5% in America. I think it was a thousand dollar CD, but that still paid me a hundred and sixty five dollars on a thousand bucks. That's good. I mean, now you're looking at if you're lucky, you can get point two right. on an account. But back in those days, you had nobody to sell to. I'm surprised there's so much silver still out there. Uh, you know, silver for sure. What about pre thirty three gold, man? They were asking you to bring that in. They were melting that down. Uh, who knows how much was melted by shops, like you mentioned these with the silver? You're talking back in 1933, 34? Yeah, pre-33 gold. I've got pictures of, uh, of of old men standing out. Not old men, they were probably younger than me now. And they're standing there with bags like this, with these droopy suits. And they're waiting in front of the treasury, turning in all their gold. I got one picture of a guy, that the headline was, Patriotic Citizen Turns in His Gold. He had $34,000 on a metal pallet full of bags of gold. Do you know how much $34,000 was in 1933, 34? Probably millions. This is a time when the average person made five or $600 a year. Yeah. That was more than a lifetime's worth of income. I would love to have gone through that gold. What was in those bags? You have to wonder, right? Was it yeah, all just like just scratched up or was it just beautiful, oh, no, uncirculated? He just felt he had to turn it in and get paper. <laughs> and, we're, and the minute the government's gonna tell you hey, turn in your gold, that's when you better hide it. Because let's not kid ourselves. When they asked you to turn in all that gold back then, and I've mentioned this once before, 10 months later, they moved the price of gold, the standard price of gold, of like $20 and a few cents to $35. 10 months later, that guy lost $15 on every $20 gold piece. Crazy. He lost something like... I forgot what the numbers were, but he turned in 34. He lost 25000 in interest, which was even more incredible amount of money. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of crazy. What do you think about this gold and silver? I mean, we've seen, uh, we've seen it come up. Then it came down a little bit. Kind of made people go, oh, okay, we're done. But now it's coming back up a little bit. I've told you before, I, I really feel that everybody needs to own some. I've got a financial advisor in the neighborhood who sent two people to me this week and they've got to get their funds together. And, uh, and I told them I take certified checks, but once again, I told the one person, you know, the amount of silver she wanted was like 600 pounds of silver. You better own a pickup. 
I mean, you're not going to take that and run. You got to take some gold. And I have no problem. Depends on which assets. I don't think it's unreasonable to have 15 or 20 percent in gold and silver and platinum. I think platinum comes in. I keep platinum. I can't understand platinum at 1,020. Yeah. It, it makes no sense. And now with what you got happening between the Ukraine and, and Russia, they're big producers of platinum yep. and palladium. I mean, not to mention wheat and corn and everything else there, but, you know, it's going to affect all of the metals. Absolutely. Um, it's just a crazy, crazy situation. Those metals might be one day something you can just not get anymore. Well, we need it for everything. Uh, you know, like it's like been said, oh, let's have turbine, let's have wind. How much does it cost? How many hundreds of tons of material, and I've read it somewhere, it's like 500 tons of ore has to be processed in order to make one wind turbine between the concrete for the brass, for the base, and the turbine itself, the, the blades that spin around. Not to mention how many hundreds of birds get killed every month out there in the North Sea off of Holland, where they got all these wind, they can go into 65 feet of water to set up these things. I just read about that. Wow. And um, how many of those albatrosses go flying by, oh, lie, lay, oh, nice and nice, you know, cruising on the airway, whack, Zip. he's dead. <laughs> Food for the, uh, for the sharks. Jeez. I mean, where's the Audubon Society? <laughs> I mean, everything has a cost. Yeah. Um, I had an argument with, uh, person who was a doctor of mine for a while and uh he was very much into uh the habitats and 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 the and nature and i don't argue with that but i brought up the po point about making all these wind turbines and even solar what happens if you have three cloudy days nobody has electric we're using candles you need to have processed oil. and remember now everything in this case all the clothes most people wear comes from petroleum products, not just gasoline. I mean, the plastic cup it was in the Wall Street Journal today. The plastic cup your potato salad is in. It's made of oil base. Isn't that weird? It, it's everything is in oil. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just what it is. You got to accept some things that you're going to need oil for. It is what it is. What do, you, what do you got new over here in this case? Anything fancy? I've seen this piece dollar right here. Great Falls Collection. What's that all about? I don't even know what the Great Falls was. I know it said it on there, but it didn't click anything. I'm just passing that one on. I think it's one of those things, too, where, like, they just put whatever you want to put on there. You know? See, this is part of that 4 You know what piece you should set. do, Guy? What's you should it? take some of your Morgans and Peace dollars, submit them to NGC, and say, hey, this is Coin, Coin Guy's hoard, and sell them for a premium. That's a good idea. Yeah. I still got to get over to NGC. I got some stuff I got to bring them. Get those gold... Uh, Saudi Arabian. Thing, yeah, right? I knew yeah. those things on your mind. Yeah, I got that. Uh -huh. And I got a couple, I got about another half a dozen coins. I just haven't gotten around. What are these? This They're... is part of the four piece set that comes in the blue box. Oh, yeah. I've got about 10 of them in the back. All in 70, huh? Can I see yeah. one? Sure. Nice. What does that mean, guy? Ask not what you, or not, ask, ask not, not what, what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Yeah. And then he started the Peace Corps. Was that a pretty good dude, this Kennedy guy? Oh, uh, yeah. Of course, he, well, he died back in November 22nd, 1963. My sister was born the next day. My mom got so upset, started crying, broke a water. So my little sister was three weeks early. What was that, the video, and we're, we know what we're talking about, the video of where he, when he in passed. Texas. Um, mm -hmm. Is that, was that live? Was that like on TV? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Man. And they played it and played it. I remember my mom was in the hospital, and I had to go to my grandfather's in, in the Bronx, and my brother my brother went to, to the aunt. And then, because in those days, the woman went in the hospital. She was there like three days with a baby. Not nowadays where it's wham, bam, and, you know, you got 24 hours. Take the baby and leave. Uh, back then, it was like three days, and I stayed at my grandfather's. And they all that was on TV was three days of, of pomp, circumstance, mourning, you know, the carriage, horse-drawn carriage with nobody there, all in black. They, they covered the, the funeral for three days. That's all I remember was on television. Crazy. Yeah. That Sad times. Like. Sad times. Well, then you got 9-11 is those big events. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody's going to have new ones as they get older.
and they'll remember things. What is that? I don't know. The, the whole vibrated. building just shook, guy. We, we're on guard now because of all the stuff going on overseas. You know, we started hearing shaking and stuff. We're like, what is that? Is that time to no. repair? Do we gotta get under the desk? Where's the desks? <laughs> Feel the whole thing. Wow. I think they're putting in a new new uh, blacktop next door. Well, they sure the are definitely the uh, whole ripping the ground shaking. off. This is nuts. Wild. Hey, um, while I got these out right here, uh, what, uh, NGC, 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 Annex. Does mm -hmm. that drop the value? The, N the NGCs, the PCGSs are the more preferred. Uh, this would be harder to sell uh, than the others. And, and respectively, the price is lower on that. This is the same coin, isn't it? Yeah. They're pretty. They're yeah. pretty no matter what holder they're in. Yeah, but see the difference in price? And is that just because of the holder? Yes. But, but guy, they say buy the coin, not the holder. And that's true. You got to do both even when you buy it because grading is subjective. Yeah. But it still is what it is. And they, you want NGC holders. That's why when I sell uh, ICG stuff, or when I tell people buy ICG, sometimes if you're if you if you're bringing a ten thousand dollar coin in, you I'm going to NGC with it. If I'm looking to get a coin that's from, you know, a Saudi Arabian coin that's made out of silver that's worth two hundred dollars, ICG is going to work. Their grading is the same. They just don't have the same advertising or the same PR, and it's just harder to sell. Yeah. Part of that, I believe, is orchestrated by competitors. That's what I think. I think there's a lot of money involved in advertising oh, there's tremendous stuff, amounts for sure. Of money. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't understand why you can't just use uh, um, facial recognition to grade coins. It'll be coming. Well, I, I think, I I think they've already got it. I really believe they already got it. And I think they bought it. The big boys bought it, buried it whatever it costs, because it'll put them out of business. Let's not kid ourselves. They've got how many, maybe 30 graders at some, some of these places, and they generate incredible amounts of money. And when you go to mail it back, they charge you X amount of money to mail it back, and they give you a nine to $10 handling fee. Well, isn't the handling fee in the cost of grading it? <laughs> isn't the handling fee in the postage? They get another 10. Yeah. Who's gonna argue with them? They get a monopoly. Sure do. Well, you I don't know how many people they grade, uh, but if they grade, you know, 20,000 or 100,000 people, it's a million bucks out of air, out of the air. Crazy. That kind of stuff you're up against. Hey, uh, when I turned over here to see uh, why the building was shaking from them uh, ripping the ground apart below us, I saw these actually. This is new. I've never seen this table here yeah. with these. What are you doing with these? Is I'm putting those out there because I got all of this silver plated stuff. Okay, now I'm telling you the truth. I paid more for that. Hold on a second. Let me show you. More than you're selling it for. I, I paid more for it because I thought the stuff was worth more. But you know, we buy we buy sterling silver flatware and such. Don't forget your two dollar roll. Oh yeah, I gotta uh, still coin roll hunt those. But we buy sterling silver and such. But you get silver plate. And I used to buy this, not knowing or realizing how much. I mean, I have two 40 pound buckets in the back, one full of spoons, one full of forks. And what is this worth worth, stuff worth? I mean, this is silver plate. This has got hallmarks and numbers. My daughter looked up these. These are online. These are from 1910. 1910. 1910. Silver plated. Yep. So people kind of look down on it almost because it's silver plated, right? There's no, not a whole but lot of value. This is kind of pretty. But it's got some historical value regardless. Yeah, well, these 1910. are from 1910. That's 100 these years old. These are jack ones. And they're asking $75 online for them. They still make nice serving plates. They're super nice. These are pretty. I could see that one of those in my house and put like my fruits and stuff and veggies on it. I used on, yeah. this particular one for years. I had a bowl for the middle. And when I would make my spinach dip, this is what I brought it out on. It looks kind of cool. This is like the Gilded Age. Oh, stuff. and you feel super fancy too. You got we one of these in the house. Yeah, we're a fancy boy. But this doesn't have a V in the middle, but look at the patina on that. That's it could be beautiful. A, it could be a G. It's guy. Now this is Gorham. Gorham silver. Gorham's I'll a, bet you you go to Fortune Offs. Five nine fifty. I know Gorham. Okay. G, -O -R -G, -O -R -G -O -R H A M, right? Yep. Yeah. Now I bet you go to Fortune Offs. This is one hundred ninety nine dollars. Easily two hundred bucks. 
Is it heavy? The size of the field, yeah. Which one? This one? Oh, geez, it's heavy. That's silver plate. Wow. And this one, I think, is even heavier. Oh, yeah, it is. That's nice, though, guy. I mean, I, I put them out there to sell. I had a guy in come in today. For 19 bucks? Yeah. I think that you can you put a doily on this and you serve your sandwiches on that. Like I said, Downton Abbey time. My problem is I've married Blake for 12 years. I still don't know what my wife likes. If I bring this home and if I say, you, hey, what do you think? And she goes, uh, what'd you do that for? You bring her breakfast. She's in bed. Yeah. It's Mother's Day. You bring it in on this plat. You're going to get lucky. You think so? <laughs> Guy, I don't think you know my know my wife. Though. If I bring this and like wake her up while she's in bed, I get yelled at for like the first two hours. What did you do? There's, there's a, peace a peace time you got to give her about an hour and a half or so. I had a guy come in today, and he was looking at a couple of the bowls I had over Hope here. Hope you don't watch this video. And the, uh, a little bigger than this, I had, the, uh, I had two others on here. And he looked at these, and I wanted five bucks each for them. That's seven. I'll take five. Okay, like this is five. I'll take three bucks. Yeah. But this is, you know, this is marked. Revere. Paul Revere. Paul Revere. I mean. That's his sterling silver, man. That's great. But anyway. He was going to go to the pet store to pick up a couple of bowls for water. I bet you can't buy a stainless steel water bowl for $5. No. He There's took no two way. of them, and they were bigger than that. That's cool. What was uh, Paul Revere's wife's name? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, know, I don't know. I know legend is that the $17.94 and the $17.94 halves were supposed to have been made from his flatware. I thought it was her Flat her, maybe it's her flat wheel. Yeah. I'm not going to argue about that. <laughs> here's hers. hers uh, we need the facts, guy. Yep. Huh? Now, here's a nice water <laughs> pitcher from you. This is Leonard's. Silver plate. That's cool. That's your gravy boat right there. Yep. Oh, jeez. I mean, people offer me now, I don't buy it anymore. But I probably paid, I'll bet you I paid more than this when I bought these. Reminds me of that famous painting where, like, the I hand. can't believe I would have bought this for any 10 bucks. I mean, but I found out I can't get nothing for it. You take it down to the down to the uh, scrapper. You got to first of all, you see this. You got to break this off. This has got to come off. We got to break it off for. It. This is made of pewter. Oh. And they want to give you like nine cents a pound for pewter. Oh. I've discovered the hard way. It's like you give them twenty pounds of pewter, they give you seven dollars or something like that. Gotcha. It wasn't worth carrying it there. But uh, I had it sitting in the back room for the last four years. We just stopped make stop buying the full service for eight and 16. I had a couple of nice service sets out. I'm taking them to coin shows and I'm selling service for eight or 12 and I want like $35. You know, they look at it and it's, you know, hey, you know, the way things are, kids go off on their own to get married. If they go to Walmart, and I'm not making fun of Walmart, they go to Walmart, service for eight is probably $79 in stainless steel. This is half the price, and they're eating on silver plate. Pretty cool. You know, when you're talking about you have to take these off first, it reminds me a little bit of hack silver. Have you heard of that? No. Hack silver? Well, you, you might call it something different. I've heard of this stuff as like, okay, like, for instance, we have fractional uh, coins, dimes, half dollars that are 90% silver. So we have some fractional options. But back in the day, maybe you owed somebody 100 whatever currency, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you had this. So you just hacked off pieces of it. And now that was your fractional. And like, here you go, dude. Here's the, here's the handle. I've seen where you have jewelry. Spain was good for this. They would wear big, heavy chains. And you would break off a link to pay for something. Yeah. And that's common. I've never heard it on silverware on this. But this is a pretty water pitcher. I might have just made it up. I think it is. <laughs> but I, I don't mean, know the history like you do. So Ten bucks. Ten, that's pretty cool. You can have your iced tea. You walk out and you serve your iced tea on this. I'll give oh, this yeah. to my wife for Mother's Day. I think, let's see, will I, it fit right on the side of my head? I'm not sure. Mm, but, uh, <laughs> you, got, you got a good size head there. It's a good size melon. Cabeza grande. Pretty cool stuff. Yep. Uh, what else? Uh, can I look around for a second? Yeah. I got this new camera. I'm trying oh, to you got a new camera. I'm trying to learn it. I'm not, not as good with this one as I am the other one, but, you know, we'll get there. How uh, how the wartime, or Civil War tokens been? I get people to see a video, and they still, they're very popular. Look at all the holes. Yeah. This is stuff I've sold probably in the last, I don't fill it in all the time. And I bet you have more to the replace last those. week, 10 days, yeah, I have about 200 more. I've sold half. I had about six. I got about three left. Um, they still sell. Anybody comes in, buys one. 
I had one guy came in, come in and he tells me a city he was in, I think it was Zanesville, Zaneburg. Same. We looked through it, it was in Ohio. There it was, he bought it. Huh. One thing I'm surprised that's been in the shop that hasn't sold and I keep on putting my eyes on it, are they right here, the Philippine foreign right here. I guess somebody wants those. He well, just hasn't come back. Well, I'm here, but I don't know if I'm buying them today. But that's a rarer one. Which the 1911s, the, the two down there. Isn't there a dollar two? There's a dollar and a half. I don't see a 1911. What I see a, I see an 04. 04, 04, I mean, not 11. Okay. The 04s. They're better. Mm-hmm. Man, they're so pretty. So pretty. I love those, and I love Cuban coins a lot. And you're not alone there because there's many, many people who buy the heck out of those. They sell themselves. By the way, I had, a, I had some people in yesterday who wanted photographs with me, and they left a gift for you. For me? For you. I don't get gifts. You got a gift now. Okay, while you go. They bought it here. Right here. And they're giving it to you. Where am I going? Am I going? Right back here. I, I still, I still want to test my camera out, though. <laughs> Look how big the store looks when I have this view on. You can see, like, the whole store. All right, I got to go over here and see the gift. Does it take that 30 pounds off of me? Because, you know, they say the camera is Oh, I see a six-pack right here. It looks good. Oh, yeah. Wow, hard as a rock. That's for you. Colorized. Silver Eagle. That's very nice of them. And this is who gave it to you. Sorry I missed you. Well, who was it, though? I can't read doctor writing. But thank you so much. That's very nice. Sorry I missed you. Enjoy the gift. That's super. Oh, there it is right there. Oh, Polly. Very cool. I know Polly. How cool is that, huh? Enameled, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The old enameling. People pay a lot of money premium for those. I mean, when, when Silver Eagles were, back in those days, Silver Eagles were $8 a piece. You're paying $29 for those. Really? They were getting stupid money for that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. It's what it is. I had a guy call me today who was very upset. He bought six rolls of AU Morgan dollars. I won't say who it's from. It's a large smelter, large mail-to-you coin thing. And he, he just had to call somebody. He was so upset about what he got. So he called me about two weeks ago. I didn't have any rolled Morgans, but I do have some now, and I sold him a roll of AUs. But he paid close to $50 per coin, or almost $1,000 a roll, for AU Morgans. And he goes, I opened them up, and he goes, there was one coin in there that he would call an AU. I said, well, you know, coin grading is subjective. He goes, no, no, there were slicks in there, slicks. So, which is what we would call culls, yeah. flat coins of us. He says he called them back and they told him a story about, well, you know, we sublet this and we don't use, we don't use professional graders. What is that about? That's not good. Well, how do you put a value on a roll of extra fines as compared to a roll of unks? You don't use professional graders. Let the buyer beware. <laughs> really? I mean, let the buyer beware. And he's very upset about it. And he bought a roll of AUs off of me, and he can look at them, and we can talk about it, but I don't think he's going to have anything to worry about. Um, you know, this eagle right here reminded me. I, I talked to you a minute ago about this. Um, my buddy at work had some 2022 silver eagles, and he said, hey, uh, I got these eagles in. You know, I paid $10 a piece for them. And I said, man, you got scammed. I said, there's n almost no way that those are legit. He showed me these 2022 Eagles, and they were fake, guy. They didn't have, you know, the new ones, they have that missing reed? Yep. That missing reed was not missing on these 2022 Eagles that he had. And he got scammed from some uh, website. Isn't that ridiculous? It's absolutely ridiculous. You're absolutely right. The fact that they're already making fake 2022s, and the fact that people make fakes anyways. What was that old saying back in the day? Counter to counterfeit is something. It's on the old colonial currency. Uh, count, to counterfeit is death. Just like that. That's what, what it says on the bills. Yeah. I think I have one fractional over here. You think anybody actually got put to death for counterfeiting? Uh, I don't think they put it there because they were just trying to scale you. They weren't playing around? I don't. <laughs> I mean, I remember being in Colonial Williamsburg back when I dropped my son off at college in 97. He went to Liberty. Um, and we dropped him off printed by Hall and Sellers. And we were in a dungeon. A dungeon? 
they, they took you into the jail there and it was like you go downstairs into it and they show you it in colonial days if you were in jail for if your sentence was more than one year they hung you because they figured more than one year in prison was cruel and unusual punishment fair enough yeah well look at now <laughs> You know, now they don't want to. They don't want to. They want to put anybody anywhere. Oh, you stay in the system forever now. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. I probably sold the one that said that. I know you sold me one a while back. Did it say the kind of sure did. Bad? That's the reason why I bought it. But some of that old colonial stuff does say that to counterfeit is death. One dollar. I see one of these. Yeah. This stuff is cool too. All hand signed by people. Yeah, I guess I sold the other one I had. I had a couple. I know you sold me one. Oh, it goes this way. Wasn't it neat how you had to get all these people to sign them? Like, it was just like, some of them have like several people. 1778. 1780. Pretty cool stuff. What was our first coinage that we had in the United States? The Demis. What is it? The Demis, the dime. Oh. They have different ways of pronouncing it. I call it Demis. Yeah. So it's like a Wicked Witch of the West is on it. Or w Wicked Witch of the yeah, West. This woman with this hair rolling out. Their eyes are bulging out. <laughs> kind of scary looking thing. But they're very expensive. Very hard to come by. What, what's the deal with those? Uh, what are they, uh, Fu Fugio? Fugio Sense or whatever? Yeah, my son has one of those over at his store. Yeah. He had picked up one and a bunch of stuff he bought. Those and, are very uh, pricey, huh? Yeah. That's another expensive coin. I've had one. I don't get many. I picked up stuff like this. Yeah, what are these all about? These are like, these are pretty. This is just for fun, right? Yeah, I sell them for five bucks each. You bring these to the bank, a hundred dollar bill to the bank, and they'll be yeah. like, uh, no? Yeah, to, to counterfeit is death. <laughs> I got this one hundred dollar bill from a teller at the bank, and then I was like, you know what? I don't need cash after all at this very moment. I'm gonna put it back in the ATM. ATM was like, no, don't like it. And it had a stamp on it, and it just stopped the ATM from even taking it. I'm like, but you gave it to me. The bank, that bank gave it to me, turned around, didn't want it. They wouldn't take it back. The ATM would. Ain't that something? It's weird. <laughs> wow. It's just a little novelty stuff, huh? Looks yeah. pretty, though. Some of it is foreign. I mean, you know. Just for fun. Yeah. Who is this? You get us some fun stuff once in a while. You can make out the uh, Greek. The foreign leaders. Uh oh. I'm not as good as uh, the world history as you are there. Might be a coin guy special. I'm not sure who this is. I think that's Greek. But you somebody in internet land knows. Somebody will give me a comment. They probably can read that right there. Looks like Greek. It says... It's like Greek to me. Uh, Dolmatis and Euro, um, $5. This guy looks mad. Ooh, this guy's scary looking. Cool. Put the face on that guy. Yeah. That's what you need. You need a scary looking leader, right? Yeah. You can't well, have no friendly leader. We got a comedian. The guy, the guy up there in Ukraine, boy, he's like Braveheart. Yeah, he's... Freedom! He's giving it his all, that's for sure. Yeah, he's got my heart. I'm rooting for him. Nice. How does, uh, how's everything else been going in here? What else we got? Oh, you have no, no silver, right? Zero, zero silver. I've got 90% dimes. No bullion. No 999. Gone. No bars, no... Uh, people bring it in, and then, like, as soon as you are allowed to sell it, it's yeah, gone. Well, you were here, the people buying it when you were here. Yeah. Well, I, uh, didn't, I didn't want to, like, pry and see what no, they were no, getting, but... But it is. It, it comes and goes very quickly. Um, but nothing's changed. I mean, the world's gotten scarier. Things have gotten crazier, and uh, and that's what it does. That kind of scary is why you have a gold and silver or heavy gold. Here's a million euros. One million... That looks like a nice euro. One million euros. One million. I can give you a discount price on this. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Five dollars. Less than a million, huh? You know what's crazy is uh, there was a movie I used to watch as a kid called Blank Check. And it was this kid that got a blank check, and he wrote a million dollars on this thing, right? So now he had a million dollars to spend. He bought a castle. He was buying cars and toys and all kinds of stuff with a million dollars. A million dollars today? You're not buying a castle. You're not buying a bunch of toys. You might, no, you know, I, I get this book. I get the Wall Street Journal. And the back of the Wall Street Journal, there's a section in the real estate, it's called mansions. You want to talk about 
opulence. You know, I watch uh, I watch the Downton Abbey and I and I watch the Gilded Age because I sell some of their jewelry and I get some of those necklaces and things like that. And you look at what things cost. You want to talk the Gilded Age, which is like 1875 till probably just before World War One. You want to talk incre incredible opulence between the haves and the have-nots. You know, there were guys who was, you look at the gowns these people are wearing. These women were wearing gowns that were more than a family made in a year, not just one person. Beautiful colors. Not only in the movie, I'm sure they copied a lot of that. The same producer of the Gilded Age is Downton Abbey. And I watch it all the time. Downton Abbey, I think is pretty cool. Uh, I like the history. And I locked away, they go through different cars as the years go by. And the outfits, the different outfits. It's like watching the time machine. And, uh, and just the opulence and the money they spent, especially during the Gilded Age. I mean, they had a party in, in, uh, right there by Central Park, like in 1883. It was in the Wall Street Journal. They, had, they were showing pictures of some of the mansions in the Gilded Age that were built in the 1880s, 1890s. And most of them were torn down by 1930 because it was a lot more money in the real estate to build a 50-story building on, you know, Park Avenue and 52nd or 5th Avenue and 45th Street. It was a lot more money in an office building than in a mansion. And they just sold it and they built those kinds of things. But there was this party with 1,200 people were invited to. Mm. 1,200 people! Jeez. Holy cow! There must have been carriages for three blocks dropping off people. A friend of mine told me about a movie, and it is actually it is running right now on HBO. On no, it's on uh, Prime Video. This is a childhood friend. I've known him since we were like 16. He was like 13. He lives in Spring Hill. Atlas Shrugs, and that means Atlas Shrugged. And um, it's a book written in 1957, and it. It was there and I started watching. He goes, wait till you see this movie. Talking about prophecy. Big business taking over everything. Government taking over everything. Them telling you what medical to use. Oh, man. Pushing medical on you. The guy invents steel at half the price and ten times as strong as steel. They want to put him out of business. They force him to sell the business. They make it where you're only allowed to own one big business. They do everything. It's It's corruption and greed and incredible big brother like and 1984 communism. you watch three episodes and you watch this and i'm saying oh my god i'm watching this on you know on laura ingram right now <laughs> and this is you know this was fiction the book was written in 1957 the movie was made like in 2009 2012 and here we are just crazy how art you know covers present times how i guess if you live long enough you'll see it all very interesting but it, it's an interesting if you get to watch it maybe you maybe while you can or maybe because facebook or Some somebody will take it off the air or somebody i tell you what's a crazy uh, one too and i don't know if you watch this one v for vendetta oh yeah uh, i man, watched that, that i'm sitting there watching that and i was like i was like whoa this is happening right now and this is an old movie yeah v for vendetta <laughs> That was yep. wild. That's the Guy Fawkes mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. How do I know that? Because his name was Guy. Yes. When I was a kid, you couldn't find many people named Guy, but Guy Fawkes. <laughs> there he was. You know, it's like, uh, what was it, 1607, he tried to blow up Parliament? How come? Because the little people didn't have much of a voice. Mm -hmm. And he was against the people, the people who were making all the rules. Yep. Anti Freedom. Huh? Yeah. Freedom. Guy. Yes. Just so you know, with this new technology I have in this camera, I should be able to get a lot more footage okay. of us in our interaction. So we can do Guy, Coin Guy the movie? Coin Guy the movie is actually a possibility with this new camera one day. Okay. Who are we gonna who else is gonna be in the movie? Well Tom Cruise is you, right? You've already established that. I don't want to use his name. Or Brad Pitt, up to you. Yeah, okay. Either way. <laughs> Nathan's gonna be played by I don't know, somebody. We'll have to get together and see. But, and then once this is produced, are we going to be put up for what? One of the awards that nobody should actually win because they should just be participation awards. Yeah. yeah. What is it the state now? That's what we uh, need, just a bunch of participation. They just outlawed val valedictorians somewhere. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
My wife is just telling me. I mean, my niece was Ballot Victoria in Islip schools a couple of years back, and she's now pharmacy program, but she's not supposed to strive for things because it's not fair to the other kids. Hmm. Then why are you to start a basketball? Why doesn't everybody play on the basketball team? Oh, because you're the best at it. Oh, I'm just curious. Why did he give away an Oscar? Or uh, what is it, 40 different awards nights? I've said this before. The hypocrisy is incredible yeah. about those people who carry on about this, but they fight in tooth and claw to win that award. Why isn't it just a participation award? I want to start getting a uh, participation award for just going to work, I think. I, sh I deserve that. You get an award just for going to work, exactly. Uh, you got nobody wants to go to work in Manhattan. I don't have to do a good job. I just want to go to work. I've had the people something. in here where you got office buildings with 5,000 people, and there's not 500 of them in there. People don't want to go to work no more. I mean, like I said, this whole, uh, these last few years, just somebody who was in a coma for two years wakes up isn't going to believe it. This is worse than H.G. Wells. It's weird. Who's H.G. Wells? I don't know. <laughs> you ask the average person. You go, don't ask him in Baltimore. Who is it? H.G. Wells, I'm the sorry. time machine. Time, the oh, yeah. I'm but sorry. Come on. He wrote many, many great books. Journey to Center of the Earth. I know that book. Time, I didn't the, know the author. The Time Machine. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. He you gotta, was you gotta, you a science fiction writer of the late 1800s. You got to let me know. Okay. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you about him. But, That's, you know, you see, you see what's going on now, and you just shake your head. You just can't believe it. Um, it's definitely weird. Uh, you know, Florida's been getting packed, and actually, uh, we had a guy that just came in a little bit ago to your store, and he was flipping out. Oh, yeah. Because of how busy Florida's been. The crazy drive is... Uh, What's going on over here? Why are people, why are people moving over to Florida? Because they they have more freedom. We have a great governor. I don't want to lose him, but I think he should run for president. Uh, we have a great governor, and leave it to the people to make their own choices. Absolutely. What is it? Is it a 1,000 people a day are moving to Florida now? Jeez. 1,000 people a day. I've been watching my home value. In the last 30 days, it went up almost $16,000. Yeah, I'm watching the crazy numbers. In 30 days. Isn't well, that, what's, what's, really what's interest is? rates now? Four and a half percent? Is it high? I don't know what it is, but I'm watching the 10-year treasury is now at 2.2. .2. A week ago, it was like 1.9. As they, they're talking about another six interest rates. As those interest rates keep coming in, a year from now, you're going to see 3% interest. How are we paying 3% interest on 11, what is it, 30 trillion in debt? We don't produce enough. Our gross national product isn't going to be enough to cover the interest. This is what's scary and crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Now they want to give people, what is it, $100 a person per month toward gasoline in California. I, th I had a guy in here who's a truck driver. I think I had mentioned this before. He filled up in Oregon, and he's driving a big uh, a big truck, 200 gallons, and he pulled in and he goes, I need 1,000 on pump two. 1,000? 1,000 on pump two. <laughs> what? And that's back when gas was 520, he said. Jeez. I think California the other day, LA, 975 for diesel. What? 975! How do you survive with that? They got trucks that hold 300 gallons. So we go, I'll take 3,000 on pump one. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what the idea, this is what you need to do. If you got all those gas prices, we got to have minimum wage go to $15. What we need, that's the solution, right? Well, I said what was going to happen behind that. Here's what you get. That's what you get. It and doesn't all, change. Everything goes up when you The people who really get hurt with that are those who are on fixed incomes. Oh, yeah. You, you get in Social Security, it goes up a little, but a lot of, a lot of, Pensions don't cover it. I mean, I've got family members who get $1,200 a month. What do you do with $1,200 a month? In New York City, you live in a cardboard box because you can't afford an apartment. It's getting like that here in Florida, too. You can't afford anything. Crazy. I mean, as I said before, I'm what, I was in Winn-Dixie. Three months ago, it was two loaves of bread for $3. Two weeks ago, it was two loaves of bread for $5. Now it's two loaves of bread for $6. Five months from now, it's two loaves for five, for 10? I'm wondering what's going to happen in 10 years. I don't know. You know, some people have enough money, they go like, okay, like, I can retire now. But the money that you're retiring with today, is that going to be good 10 years down the line? Well, Are you going to be able to survive? That's the whole part. That's why I'm never going to retire. I have to keep working. You got to keep working. <laughs> no. But, you know, that that's what you look at. What is it one of, the, uh, one of those people in power in D.C. said? 
if you make an under 300,000, if you make over 300,000, this doesn't really affect you. 300,000. What is that? 1% of the country? It's not as many as, uh, as they, I mean, it's a lot of people, but it's not a majority, is it? Two school teachers on Long Island make that much. Yeah. If you're a fireman, a policeman, any combination of school teacher, fireman, policeman, New York City, Nassau County, Suffolk County, you're making 300,000. Yeah. A lot of world, a lot of this country doesn't understand that. A lot of places, places that pay crazy money. Mm -hmm. And they do. I mean, there was a cop living across the street from me 17 years ago and he was making a buck and a quarter. Jeez. And he'd only been on the job six, seven years. But he was married to a school teacher. Hmm. That's the kind of world that is. You're still going to feel it. I remember my brother-in-law telling me, I remember talking to him and I said, we can go out to dinner. Two for 20. He laughed. On Long Island was two for 65. Whoa. Now it's probably two for 100. Jeez. I bet you, you can't get two for 20 anymore. And this is only a few months ago. A year ago. Crazy. That means just where it is. Wild times, guy. Wild times, but we're still here. What are we going to do? Wild times, what's your recommendation before we go? Huck it down. Read a book. Uh, put away gold and silver. Hug your children. That's about it. Yeah. Hug your children. Try to have some fun while you can. Live a good life. Be fun. Get yeah. some protections just in case. Have some things just in case. Yeah, man. And, uh, and carry on. And God bless America. God bless America. Guy, thank you very much for uh, thank you. letting us come into your shop. I'll have some information down in the description of the video. Anybody wants to check out your shop, come by and see you. Give you a call. Um, whatever. This, that's available for them, right? Yep. Cool. We're here. Appreciate come it. See, come see Nathan and me. Maybe next time, Coin Guy the Movie. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.